This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Eva Shaw. Today is January 10th, 2010 at 2 p.m. This is an interview with Eva Shaw in Sarasota, Florida. She was born on November 11th, 1922 in Berlin, Germany. Uh, my brother and I lived a very sheltered life until Hitler came into power. I'm not saying that I didn't hear, no, hear about the Nazis, of course, but I had no experience like Frank had, you know. I didn't work at the time yet, and uh, that all comes afterwards. But I had, when Hitler came into power, January 30th, 1933, uh, that was the first time that I really got seriously exposed to Hitler. And uh, we were, I was on the stage doing acrobatics, which really was more gymnastics, but I did the split and stood on my head. And I was 16 years, I just turned 16 years old. No, not 16, I was 11 years old. And uh, so I, you know, and it was, I had all these private, I had private acrobatics, what we called it in Germany, and I remember I was on the stage and my mother and father were there and my brother, I don't know whether my grandmother was already there because my, my grandmother came to Berlin later. She lived in, in the town in which my mother was born, which was in the Rhineland. It was called Elbefeld, and it was in the Rhineland. And so they were all watching me and I was on the stage and I was tumbling, I know exactly which exercises that I was tumbling around on the stage. And all of a sudden the loudspeaker went on because those days they didn't have television, they had very little radio. And the loudspeaker went on and said, Adolf Hitler has just been appointed Reich Kanzler by President Hindenburg, Burg. He was the president before Hitler became the Reich Kanzler, and Reich Kanzler meant, uh, what is it called? Um, he was in charge, mm -hmm. you know, he was like a president, but it wasn't called that. And uh, he was appointed and he was not elected. He was just appointed by this uh, one who was in, in charge of him before because he was pressured and there were many big factories and people who were very anxious for Hitler to come into power because they thought it would be important for them. And this was the announcement. Well, some people applauded and some people were scared. And my parents were scared stiff, especially my mother. She was very scared. And we had to go home. Immediately everything woke up immediately when this announcement was made. and. Uh, the Nazi f uh, flags, she showed you before. I don't know, he'll have to be here. This is what it, what it, this was not in Berlin, but this is what it looked like. All the um, swastika flags, these are the Hitler flags, the swastika, mm -hmm. okay? They all came out of the windows immediately for, of the people who wanted him to be elected. Not all of them, but it was very forceful and they started to parade in the streets. All the Nazis who wanted Hitler started to parade in the streets, and they had burning torchlights at the time with real fire on it. And they would walk into the street and they would sing Nazi songs. And the people who wanted Hitler to be into power, they all had the Nazi swastika flags out. And we had to go, we didn't have a car, Although at one time my father did have a car, but not for his business, but he didn't have it at that time. And we had to go in the tramway like that all through Berlin. And it was a very long distance, like from Longwood Key probably to where you live, something <laughs> like that. And all, you have to understand, all the people were marching and singing Nazi songs. And one of them it was when the Jewish blood uh, flows from I don't know, from the garden or whatever they were holding. And it was very, very scary. And my parents thought they would never come home. But we did get home at that time. And we had to see all this through the window all the way. 
and it was a long, as I said, it was a long, long way, and we were very scared. And my mother said immediately she would like to leave Germany. And she was scared stiff. And at that time, Jews could have gone from Germany with all their belongings, with all their money, with all their furniture, with everything that they had. But, uh, and some people did. They were the lucky ones. But my father says, don't worry about it. I fought in the World War, in the First World War, it was to 1918, 1914 to 1918. I fought for the fatherland and nothing is going to help, to be, got nothing is going to be done to a, a person, a man who fought for the fatherland, they would never touch us. And many, many Jewish men felt the same way. They said, how can they do anything to us? We gave our lives for the fatherland, okay? And after we came home, my father had a, a little booklet where all the battles that he was in were recorded, and he showed it to me, he took me on my, on my his lap, I was 11, just 11 years old, and he said, nothing was going to happen. Look, all the things I sacrificed for the fatherland. And that was the attitude of many Jewish men. And that's why so many didn't leave right there and then. And then you have to understand when you have a comfortable life, even today, okay? I don't know which party you belong to, mm -hmm. but if it's the Republicans, uh, not now, then the Republican Party will say, well, the next time it's an election, we'll win, and the Democrats will lose. So why should we leave? Would you leave your country when you have your parents have a home and you have a job and everything else? And, uh, you know, it's just another appointment. Mm -hmm. And that was the situation at that time.